Yeah. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Okay, so today we are going to start a new chapter in organic chemistry that is isomerism. Okay, so isomerism, the first part that is structural isomerism, we have already done. Okay, so if you look at the classification of isomerism, just a quick you know, introduction of this and then we'll move on directly into optical isomerism. Okay, so isomerism, if you see, It is the property of a molecule. Okay. Property of a molecule. For example, suppose if I take one example of uh, C2H6O, if I ask you to draw the structure of C2H6O, we can draw two possible structure for this. One is you can draw CH3, OCH3, and other one is CH3, CH2, OH. Only single bond is possible in this. Why? Because the degree of unsaturation, if you count for this one, DOU, degree of unsaturation, if you remember, it is C plus 1 minus H plus X minus N divided by two. You have done this in first chapter, if you remember. Okay, so C plus one is carbon atom. We have two, two plus one minus H is six. There's no halogen, there's no nitrogen divided by two. So when you solve this, you're getting zero. So degree of unsaturation is zero, that means for this molecule, we do not have any single bond, double bond ring structure possible. And hence, we can draw these two possible structure. Isn't it right? Right? One structure is this, other one is this. Now, what is this? What is the name of this compound? Could you tell me? IUPAC name? What is the IUPAC name of this compound? It is ethanol right it is an alcohol right it is an alcohol because the functional group oh is present so this we call it as ethanol this one is ether and we call it as dimethyl ether ether the name of this compound is dimethyl ether Okay, so whether you write this alcohol that is ethanol or dimethyl ether, yeah, that also you can write. That's fine, Prakul. Methoxymethane also you can say. So the point is this molecule and this molecule has same molecular formula. And that molecular formula is C2H6O, right? So with the same molecular formula, two different compounds we can draw. One is alcohol, other one is ether. Obviously, their chemical and physical properties are different, okay, because they have different functional group. One is alcohol, second one is ether. So this kind of phenomenon, we call it as isomerism. What phenomenon? A given molecule with a given molecular formula can exist in two different form. This phenomenon is isomerism, okay? And these two molecules are called isomers of each other. What kind of isomers? since they have a different functional group, so they are functional isomers. Functional isomers. Isomers we always define in a pair, right? We can say these two are isomers. We cannot say this molecule is isomer. That is not possible, okay? Functional isomers, why? Because the functional group are different, OH and O, okay? So isomerism is what the compound having same molecular formula, but different structural formula and different physical and chemical properties are called isomers. Okay. 
So isomers are compounds with same molecular formula, different structural formula, but sorry, and and different physical and chemical properties are called isomers. And this phenomenon is is isomerism. Okay, and this phenomenon is isomerism. So this is what we had discussed already in the uh, previous class of isomerism. Okay, now when you see the classification of isomerism, first of all, it is classified into two categories. One is structural. Structural, we also call it as constitutional. Structural or constitutional. This is, and the second one is. Stereo. structural and stereo isomerism. Further, this is structural isomerism is classified into different, different categories. The first one under structural is chain isomerism, then positional, and then we have functional. We have done this. I'm just giving a quick recap. And then after this, we'll move on to optical, positional, functional, metamerism, metamerism, and then we have Tautomerism, tautomerism, and then we have ring chain. So if you remember in this, we have discussed all type, but only this tautomerism is left, isn't it? So we'll discuss tautomerism also in the last of this chapter. We have discussed this part already. So we are not going to discuss this again. You will have to revise this. Okay. Now stereo further classified into two categories. Stereo further classified into two categories. That is uh, configurational one second. Configurational right down this side. And the second part is conformational. So conformational and configurational. Okay, conformational we have different different form. Configurational also classified into two categories further. So also has two part. One is 
geometrical and other one is optical isomerism okay so we had discussed geometrical as well isn't it cis trans easy sin anti we had discussed yes or no yes so yeah goc prakul we have almost done few things are still left but it is done for grade 11 once we start a reaction mechanism there will take up all those things which is left okay have we done the first part geometrical in normal classes could you tell me acha okay anyway so we'll start from the beginning only then okay we'll do structural also don't worry no problem so we'll do structural also don't worry but we'll start today with this part okay geometrical and optical we'll start no problem we'll do the entire chapter again okay those who has already done in um, kvpy classes okay that's fine they can revise this but today we'll start with stereo isomerism here okay conformational and configuration we'll do and then in the last we'll go towards the structural isomerism correct so first we are going to discuss is geometrical isomerism okay so write down the heading one more thing these two are different from each other it's not like if you do not understand this you won't understand this one okay so we can start with this and then the last will come to this point here we have general definitions okay that we can do easily we'll do that don't worry okay so we'll start with stereo isomerism heading all of you write down that is geometrical isomerism okay see for isomerism the concept is that only same molecular formula and different properties whether it is geometrical whether it is optical or any other kind of isomerism molecular formula must be same okay molecular formula must be same now you see this example we'll take one example and then we'll discuss other things yes we'll do everything in this chapter we'll do optical we'll do geometrical we'll do conformational we'll do everything okay we are starting today with geometrical is it fine with all of you once we finish all this we'll do uh, structural isomerism as well correct okay so suppose i am writing down two uh, example here one is ch single bond ch here we have ch3h here we have ch3h and the another one is ch ch h ch3 ch3h this is one pair another one c double bond c ch3 h ch3 h ch double bond c h ch3 and ch3 h what is the difference in this two molecule this two means i'm talking about this two molecule do you have any difference and what is the difference or similarity in this two molecule these two molecules are same or different these two molecules are same or different these two molecules are different molecules right this is different molecule but this one is identical molecule 
there's no difference in this two. Why? Because we do not have double bond present here. If double bond is not present, then you can easily rotate this carbon across this single bond. Rotation is there. So you can rotate this and you'll get this molecule. Correct? But here the rotation is not possible because you see the double bond forms this way. We have a sigma bond like this. The orbital overlaps will form a sigma bond. And double bond forms by lateral overlapping like this one. This forms the double bond. Now, once you try to rotate this, obviously, this pi bond you need to break. And that we cannot do in isomerism. Right. Hence, what we say that across a double bond, the rotation is hindered. Across the double bond, we can also say triple bond, same logic. We can also say ring structure. The rotation is hindered and hence these two molecules are different. But this here, the rotation is uh, easily possible across a single bond, right? Hence, these two molecules are identical. Now, this kind of compound, right, where the properties differs because of double bond or triple bond, not triple bond, double bond or ring, okay, this kind of molecules, we call it as geometrical isomers. For example, you see, these two molecules, both CS3 are on the same side, both CS3 are on the opposite side, right? So relative stability, if you see, this one is more stable than this because we have less repulsion over here, right? So this kind of phenomenon, we call it as geometrical isomerism. Write down the definition, all of you. Write down the isomers. Geometrical isomers, write down isomers. which has which has the same structural formula same structural formula but differ in the in the arrangement in the arrangement of atoms or groups, atoms or groups in space, yes, I'm writing. Can't you see, see the screen? Guys, the screen is visible. Arujita, you can raise wine. Okay, it's fine for all of all of this. Yeah, okay. Uh, atoms or groups in space due to restricted rotation. Due to restricted rotation around the around the double bond are called are called geometrical isomers are called geometrical isomers and this phenomenon is geometrical isomerism we can have yeah, here a double bond or ring also we can write because across ring also gi possible are called geometrical isomers now according to this you see this two compound has different property they have the same molecular formula you see here these two have the same molecular formula, but different properties. 
So these two are different molecules like I have written over here. Could you tell me the IUPAC name of this compound? IUPAC name of this compound? It is but 2 in, yes. This molecule is but 2 in. What is the name of this compound? Same. Okay, but 2 in. Now the whole purpose of IUPAC nom nomenclature got defeated over here. Because the purpose of the naming here is what? That each and every molecule should have its uh, its its own name, right? A specific name must be given to each molecule. That is the whole purpose of IUPAC nomenclature. So when it comes to isomers like this, the purpose of the whole objective of uh, IUPAC nomenclature got defeated here. So we have to find out some way by which we can differentiate. Suppose if I ask you to draw the structure of but 2 in, some of you will draw this, some of you will draw this, and both are different uh, molecules, right? So we have to specify that which structure we need to draw or we are talking about, correct? So to overcome this difficulty here, we have given a term here, and that term is cis trans easy and sin anti nomenclature. So to define or to you know uh, write down the name of geometrical isomers, we have different naming system. Naming systems of geometrical isomers, GI. GI means geometrical isomers. Three types we have mainly. One is cis and trans. Second one is uh, ENZ. Third one is sin and anti. Sin and anti is used when we have nitrogen present in the molecule. It is this nomenclature, this naming system we use when CN double bond is there. In case of this, we use or NN double bond is there. In case of this also, we use sin and anti uh, system of nomenclature, right? Cis trans and easy and sin anti, these three nomenclature we have. When we use cis and when we use trans and when we use ENZ, ENZ is generally used in more substituted alkene. more substituted alkene. More substituted means what? The double bonded carbon at least have three different group, right? The, this means write down the double bonded carbon double bonded carbon at least have three different groups. Okay. Cis and trans we use when the alkene is not highly substituted, means the double bonded carbon has only two groups different on both double, bond, do, both double bonded carbon atom. Two different groups here, total if you see. Copy this down. Okay. Yeah. So one by one we'll discuss. Okay. First of all, we'll discuss cis and trans.
So it's pretty simple. Suppose we have a molecule like this, C double bond C. Now here we can have any group attached on this carbon atom, right? We can have any group attached to it. So total four we have here, four group possible. Atoms of course one, two, three, four position we have. So out of this four, if three group are different, three atoms are different, then we, we use preferably we use E and Z system, okay? If out of the four, if three groups are different, if only two groups are different we have, then we use cis and trans system, okay? So here you see, suppose we have a group attached to it, same example, I'll take CH3, H, and H, CH3, like this. Okay. Another one, if I write down CH3, both CH3 on the same side and both H on the same side. So you see here, cis trans isomers or cis isomers we define when identical group group R present on, on the same side, that is cis. Trans means when identical group groups are present on the opposite side. Opposite side of the double bond actually. Okay. So you see in this one, CS3 and CS3 are identical group. It is opposite side. So it is trans isomers. H and H also on the opposite side, trans. CS3, CS3 on the same side. So it is cis isomers. So if you write the name of this compound, if it is obviously but two in, but this name would be, since it is cis, so it is cis but two in. This one is trans, but two in. So if I ask you to draw the structure of cis butene, cis but two in and trans but two in, it is clearly an understood and un, you can understand this that which is structure you need to draw. Uh, Prakul, I was talking about this four group, one, two, three, four positions we have. No, so out of four, if three are different. One, two, three, four. Out of four, if three are different. We'll discuss this. Sir. E, Z, and Z, and Z will discuss. Correct. So it is cis and this is trans. So cis and trans, we can define only when identical group are present on the both double bonded carbon atom. Like another example, you see. We have a carbon carbon double bond with C O O H and H. This is also C O O H and H. Suppose we have this and another one in which both C O O H is present on the opposite side. H C O O H. It is C. O, O, H, and H. So this one is obviously, it is cis, the first one. And this is trans. Okay. Cis molecule, this we call it as malic acid. You see the position, relative positions changes, the compound itself changes. It is malic acid. It is fumaric acid. So relation between malic and fumaric is they are geometrical isomers of each other. 
okay if you have this compound c double bond c c o o h h instead of c o o h we have c 6 h 5 here and this is h C6H5 like this. Okay. Name of this compound, if this COOH you replace by phenyl group, name of this compound is synamic acid. Right, this one is also transform of synamic acid. See, this is the, uh, you know, uh, point I was talking about. When at least three groups are different, you see one, two, three different groups we have. Then preferably we can say, we can define this as E and Z isomers also, but E and Z we'll discuss a bit later. Suppose if you have to assign cis and trans over here, right, cis and trans over here, then we can define cis and trans with respect to always identical group, that is hydrogen here. Hydrogen present on the same side, so we can say it is cis, if we have to define cis and trans. Hydrogen on the opposite side, it is trans. But preferably for this molecule, we define E and Z isomers. How do we define E and Z? We'll discuss that a bit later. Okay. Now you see, what is the condition for a double bond to show geometrical isomerism? Okay. So condition for, if you talk about GI, GI is possible under three conditions. Because of double bond, we can say GI possible, right? Because of ring, GI possible. And the third condition is because of double bond, inside the ring. Double bond inside the ring. This three condition you have to take care of. When you talk about a double bond, we're talking about this only now, ring and this we'll see a bit later. Double bond, you see, the condition is that two atoms, atoms or groups attached to the attached to the double bonded carbon atom must be different. This means what? Suppose we have a molecule C double bond C and here I'm writing down a term A and B here and here suppose P and Q are attached like this. So condition for double bond is what? This A and B must be different. It cannot be the same atoms or molecules or groups. A and B must be different. P and Q also different here. So condition for a double bond to show GI, 
is A must not equal to B and P must not equal to Q. Right? This is the condition for a double bond to show GI. A can be equal to P, B can be equal to Q, but this two are not equal, must not equal. Clear? Copy it, all of you. Okay. Now, the second type of naming is E and Z isomers. E and Z isomers, if you see, we have a molecule, say, carbon-carbon double bond A, B, P, and Q. So first of all, E and Z isomers we define when out of the four atoms or groups, at least three are different or four are different. Then we can define E and Z. Because if any two of these groups or atoms are equal or identical, then with respect to that atoms or groups, we can always define cis and trans. But when we have highly substituted alkene, highly substituted alkene means, suppose we have ethene. Ethene is this H, 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 and H. Now, if you remove one of the hydrogen atom and place CS3 here, this we call it as substituted alkene. Another one, if you substitute here, it is more substituted than the previous one. This one is even more substituted and this one is highly substituted alkene. So when we have highly substituted alkene, then we use ENZ, a technique for the nomenclature of the geometrical isomers. So when we use E, and when we use Z. So to, to define this E and Z, first what we do, first we assign priority on these atoms or group. Suppose this has higher priority than the other one. We assign priority. Uh, it depends on the molecule, uh, Prakul. If all the four groups are different, you cannot even define cis and trans. But if any two are same, then you can also write down cis and trans. That won't be wrong, but preferably we'll write E and Z for that. Okay. It's always better to write E and Z. Cis and trans with respect to the atom, which is identical on both carbon atoms. Okay, so to, to define E and Z isomers, what we'll do, we'll assign priority on the atoms or groups attached to the double bonded carbon atom, this two carbon atom. This carbon atom has these two groups attached. So we'll assign priority on this two. Suppose it is first priority, this is a second priority. It means this one is higher priority, this one is lower priority. Similarly, this one is higher priority, this one is lower priority. Like this, we assign priority. Now Z isomers is the one in which is the one in, in which the higher priority groups or atoms are present. on the same side of double bond. Same side of double bond. Okay. If you talk about E isomer,
higher priority group or atom are present on on the opposite side of double bond opposite side of double bond so if you talk about this one same priority on the same side so this is z isomer we can say we'll do some examples first you copy this down okay now so basically if you know how to assign priority we can say z and e isomers easily we can define but the question is how to assign priority here correct so to assign priority we have a rule that we call it as cip rule the name cip is based on the name of a scientist of three scientists actually that is kan in gold and the third one is prelog so kan in gold prelog are the name of the scientists these three scientists has given this rule you just need to follow the rules to assign priority on the atoms or groups attached to the double bonded carbon atom first rule is what higher atomic number See here, atomic number, not the atomic mass. Means higher priority. So suppose iodine, bromine, chlorine, fluorine, fluorine attached. So priority order would be this: higher atomic number. In case of isotopes. in case of isotope we'll see mass number we'll see mass number so hydrogen isotope you see t d h the priority order oxygen if you see o18 is higher priority than o16 if you talk about chlorine chlorine 37 higher priority than chlorine done do you have bio exam tomorrow okay so who all are all are writing okay Okay, so some of you have requested to finish the class a bit early. Okay, so is it fine with you if I finish it by seven? Okay. Yes. So we'll finish it by seven. We'll take just five minutes of uh, five minutes of break in between. Like break, we won't take much because we need to finish many things, right? So five minutes break. We'll finish it by seven. Okay. So this is the thing we have. Now the third thing is third priority, third uh, rule. You write down. 
if groups are attached are attached then we'll compare the priority then we'll assign priority priority on the basis of on the basis of atomic number of first atom of first atom see this example suppose we have chlorine we have so3h we have oh we have nhch3 we have coh these groups are there then how do you assign priority to this we'll compare the no we won't do like that prakul we'll compare the priority by comparing the atomic number of the first atom like we have chlorine first atom is sulfur first atom is oxygen one second shraddha i'll go back first atom is nitrogen first atom is carbon chlorine we know atomic number is 17 sulfur it is 16 oxygen it is 8 nitrogen it is 7 and carbon it is 6 atomic number more atomic number more will be the priority priority order is this so if groups are attached we'll compare the atomic number of the first atom I'll go back one second. Copy. I'm um, so in the third point. So, what is the fourth word? Uh, in if groups are attached, this one. Yes, thank you, thank you, sir. If groups are attached, done, Shraddha. Okay. Now, obviously, if you have. different groups attached with different atom here like chlorine sulfur oxygen we have different atoms so easily we can compare sometimes what happens sometimes we have the same uh, atom attached like for example suppose one a group is ch3 attached to the double bonded carbon atom other one is ch2 ch3 attached to the double bonded carbon atom other one is co oh attached to the double bonded carbon atom so in this case obviously we compare first atom so first atom is same only here that is carbon we cannot compare with respect to the first atom then we'll compare the second atom in the chain so carbon we don't have the chain we have hydrogen only so we'll compare hydrogen with carbon in the chain we'll compare so carbon carbon chain we have carbon oxygen we have here so carbon here we have carbon here we have oxygen so priority order would be like this oxygen carbon and hydrogen this is the priority order done
that's what i said prakul if the like if the first atom is same then we cannot you know decide priority on the basis of first atom then we compare the second atom second atom in this carbon we have hydrogen and we go go along the chain the carbon chain that we have here we don't have chain we don't have any choice so we'll compare hydrogen here here we have carbon first atom second atom is again carbon so carbon and hydrogen we compare them right so obviously carbon is more so this one is higher priority than this if we compare the second atom here that is oxygen oxygen and carbon obviously oxygen has more atomic number hence this is the priority order yes so again i'll write down here how do we do it we have carbon with hydrogen attached right and here we have carbon with hydrogen then again carbon with hydrogen like this here we have carbon and then oxygen oxygen and h so first atom we cannot decide with respect to the first atom that is carbon carbon and carbon only so leave the first atom now you compare the second atom second atom we compare only in the chain carbon carbon chain so second atom here is carbon so we'll see this carbon atom but the second atom here is hydrogen because we do not have any choice we'll take this hydrogen so carbon hydrogen carbon is higher priority this second atom here is oxygen oxygen is higher priority than this order is this is it clear so these are the trick that we use it is it is just the method we have we do not have any logic here just the method we use in order to assign priority and right? you have to do it this way only only one complication you may have when we have double or triple bond present in that case also we have a hypothetical method that we use i'll give you one example here not very common but you should know sometimes they ask this okay next point you write down a double or triple bonded atom bonded atom is considered is considered equivalent to two two or three such atoms two or three such atoms with example you will understand what is the meaning here we have suppose you have to compare c double bond o and c n c triple bond n this two we need to compare since we have a double bond here so what will it is a hypothetical method it's not logically correct okay we have a double bond here so what we assume in this so in this we assume that the carbon is attached with two oxygen and each oxygen also attached with two carbon because we have a double bond here so carbon is attached with two oxygen and each oxygen also attached with two carbon so you see one oxygen with one carbon this side one more carbon we have here one more carbon we have here this is the meaning here hypothetical method it doesn't happen practically similarly here we have a triple bond it means carbon is attached with three nitrogen and each nitrogen attached with three carbon so one carbon we have here another two is this another two is this and another two is this this is what the meaning we have so if you want to compare this two we'll compare the first atom carbon and carbon we cannot decide this when we compare the second atom we have oxygen and we have nitrogen so obviously oxygen is more so priority order is this
Okay. So first, second, and then third, like this we go. Is it always 2C attached means? No. When we have a double bond, then we say CO double bond we have. It means each carbon has two oxygen. Each oxygen has two carbon. That is what it means. Yes. So number of oxygen and nitrogen we are not considering. We are considering the atom we have here and their atomic number. That is it. Each O will not have 2C. Like I said, yeah, we can assume that in order to compare the priority. Each oxygen has two carbon, each carbon has two oxygen. So first atom is carbon, second atom is oxygen, third atom is carbon. Carbon, second atom is nitrogen, third atom is carbon, like that. One second, just. So these are not very common. It's not like you will get this always, uh, like very often in the exam, but yes, uh, rarely you get, but you should know this, right? Now, one more example we have here, like sometimes what happens, the carbon atom contains a ring attached to it. I'll explain this with an example. Suppose we have carbon, carbon, double bond. Oh, sorry carbon carbon double bond and this carbon atom has a ring attached to it this is the ring for example oxygen atom and here also we have a ring five member ring like this Okay, so obviously this side, it's pretty clear. Bromine has more atomic number. So it is higher priority one, and this is two. The problem is how to assign priority in this ring. Okay, how to assign priority in this ring. So consider this ring. This ring is nothing but this. Okay, and this ring you have to open. Like suppose this carbon I'll write down here attached with two oxygen. So we'll write down O this side, we'll write down O this side, and then O with carbon, carbon, right? O with carbon, carbon. How many carbon atoms we have? We have three carbon atoms, right? Like you start from this oxygen, carbon, 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 oxygen, carbon like this 
we write like this is the way we we have it's not like we have some logic this is the method we use in order to assign priority how did we write we start from this carbon this carbon carbon oxygen carbon 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 oxygen carbon we'll write this again other way like you need to write down clockwise anti clockwise both way you need to travel so when you start from this side carbon oxygen then again we have carbon 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 oxygen carbon this is the first ring now similarly we'll write down the smaller one also this ring this is the ring we have we'll start from this one carbon i'm going clockwise so we have oxygen carbon carbon oxygen and carbon anti clockwise oxygen carbon carbon oxygen carbon like this you open it and then you compare the two atom like this i'll tell you how first atom is carbon we cannot decide the signal second atom you see we have only oxygen again oxygen oxygen we cannot decide ignored third atom is again carbon we cannot decide ignored fourth atom is again carbon we cannot decide ignored fifth atom if you see here we have carbon but here we have oxygen here we can easily compare correct so this is oxygen here and this is carbon here so we can compare oxygen carbon oxygen is more you know has more atomic weight hence this has higher priority than the other one this is one this is two higher priority group on the same side it is z tell me so if you have ring you have to do like this both way you need to write clockwise anti clockwise and compare higher priority same side we have z higher priority opposite side we have e i'll write down i'll write down this z you just let it be i'll write down how it is z here i have written i guess you see see i have written this z isomer when higher priority are present on the same side of double bond z opposite side then e okay so you see both higher priority same side hence it is z clear so when you have a compound like this a smaller ring will have the higher priority in this kind of pattern okay a smaller ring will have a higher priority yeah i'll explain so what you need to do you write down the two ring which is attached like this and open up the ring like this carbon write down here and then you start going clockwise so oxygen carbon 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 oxygen carbon write down here oxygen carbon 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 oxygen carbon done then anti clockwise oxygen carbon 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 oxygen carbon this is what we have same thing you need to do for this group carbon oxygen carbon 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 oxygen and we have this then you start comparing one by one first atom same we cannot do second atom oxygen second atom oxygen we cannot do third atom carbon carbon cannot do carbon carbon cannot do carbon oxygen hence here we can compare oxygen has more atomic number this has higher priority than this hence one and two tell me clear to all of you it's pretty simple logic we do not have just a method you need to open the ring and then compare one by one this is also very rare you will get questions like this because yes in je sometimes they have they have asked this questions okay so must understand this
okay now one last thing in this you write down number 5 and number 6 you write down the number here if loan pair is present it has it has the least priority it has the least priority like for example we have carbon nitrogen double bond oh ch3 h this nitrogen you see it has one lone pair present on it so in this case also geometrical isomerism possible priority if you check carbon hydrogen carbon is higher priority oxygen is always have higher priority because lone pair only higher priority opposite side this is e and we also call it as anti because we have carbon nitrogen uh, bond so when nitrogen is present syn and anti we can define so higher priority opposite side anti isomers it is clear understood Done. Okay. Now we'll see some examples. The logic and the theory we have. You need to see in these molecules, geometrical isomerism is possible or not. H two C double bond H two. Copy down all of you first. Geometrical isomerism is possible or not? CH double bond CH two CH three CH three CH double bond CH CH three. try this just need to find out gi is possible or not condition i have already told you what is the condition for a double bond to show gi gi Okay. So now you see, 
the condition for a double bond to show gi is what again i'll repeat if a and b is there p and q is there what is the condition a does not equals to b p does not equals to q isn't it identical group or atom should not present on the double bonded carbon atom isn't it yeah so do we have gi possible in the first one yes or no y or n you can type no no gi okay in this one do we have gi possible no because left hand side left side to its fine but here we have both atoms hydrogen only so not possible in this one yes we have possible right and we have two isomers possible cis and trans for this remember you let it be in this one yes possible and in the last one is it possible last one yes possible last one possible not across this across this it is not possible no gi but across this double bond it is possible any one uh, bond is satisfying so across this double bond is possible so overall the molecule will show okay one more thing the number of double bond across which the gi is possible is called stereocenter okay stereocenter is the number of bond across which the gi is possible we can have double bond we can have a ring also we can count in gi okay i'll write down here so in this one if i ask you number of gi the first one obviously there's no gi present there's no stereocenter present in this we have one stereocenter this is star mark we represent the stereo center in this how many stereo center we have how many stereo center we have in this two because across this possible across this also it is possible in this one we have only one stereo center this is not possible if any one stereo center is there molecule will show gi okay correct so these are the some very basic examples we have now for j point of view if you look at this kind of example you see sometimes what happens we have a carbon double bond c ch3h and with this carbon we have a ring present here like this we have a ring carbon atom present in the ring in this molecule what happens so when the ring is present then what we'll do in order to find out whether the molecule will show gi or not okay so if you want to understand what group is attached this side and what group is attached this side obviously this is fine two different we have everything is based on this right so to understand what group we have this side you just go like this like this you need to go the white one you consider what you get you get ch2 ch2 and c right you'll get ch2 ch2 and c this this means on this side ch2 ch2 c group is attached okay similarly if you go other way like suppose you need to understand which group is attached this side so you need to go like this the green one this gives again ch2 ch2 and c since we have identical group it means this side and this side we have identical group present and hence the molecule won't show gi i'll give you another example see this one we have a ring double bond c ch3h so this obviously it won't show but when i place this chlorine here you don't have to write this actually you just see this path both path must be different if you go anti clockwise or clockwise the path must be different this path at the first carbon we have cl and when you go other way this path 
the chlorine is present at the second carbon right it means both clockwise and anti clockwise we have different path it means a different group attached over there Did you understand this? Both way you need to go. If both paths are different, it means different group attach both side. This will be a stereo center. And yes, GI possible across this. Could you tell me this one? Yes or no? Yes, possible. If I attach, possible. If I attach chlorine here, then yes, guys, tell me. All of you must respond. What about this? Not possible. What about this? Possible. What about this? What I will say that, what is the route? Tell me. Previous one. This one. Yeah. Same thing. No, you see the same. Uh, if you go like this, then at the first carbon, you are having two chlorine. If you go like this, first carbon, we have one chlorine and one bromine. Means the path are different. Hence, yes, possible. Right? See, a key logic here. Like I'm not giving you any, uh, you know, different, different logic in all these compounds. Ek or example, le lete hai, chalo. I say, dekho, suppose you have a four member ring. Hai? Aisa kuch hai. And we have a double bond here. Carbon we have uh, CH3 and D present here. Up, we need to find out in this one, do we have GI possible or not? Could you tell me? Yes, it is possible or not? Not possible, correct? Because what we'll do? Here we'll go like this. So C, C, C we are getting. If you go like this, again, the same atom we are getting. The same path, so it's not possible. What if, if I attach one chlorine here, Okay. Shadda, tell me. No. Very good. How it is possible, Ritu? You see, this path, we have chlorine at the second carbon. This way also, chlorine at the second carbon. So it's not possible. Paths are same. Oh, yeah. Fine. What about this one? If I attach one chlorine here, what if I attach one chlorine here? Not possible because this path, again, the path is same. This way, this way, 
path is same. What if I attach one chlorine here? Again, not possible. What if I, if I attach one CS3 here? Possible, right? So like this, you will get the question, okay? Uh, a question could be anything. It's very dynamic, right? I cannot give you the, you know, like this type or that type, but you should know the logic. If any group is attached, a ring is attached, then what you should do to find out whether the given molecule is, uh, you know, does show geometrical isomerism or not. Is clear with you? Okay. So now we had discussed that uh, um, across a double bond, how we can find out GI is possible or not. But like I said, here, if you see, if I go back and show you the slide, that one slide I show you that I have shown you that there are three possibilities under which the geometrical isomerism is possible. You see this, right? Double bond, ring and double bond inside the ring. So for double bond, we understood the condition. This was the condition we have. So what is the condition for a ring to show geometrical isomerism? Okay. So right next heading, write down. Achha, one more thing I forgot to tell you. Stereo center you must have written. So write down stereo center can be sp2 or sp3 hybridized. Anything possible. Stereo center could be sp2 or sp3. SP2 or SP3, anything. No, no, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, stereo center, SP2 bhi ho sakta and SP3 also it's possible. So both it is possible. Like obviously if you have a double bond, then SP2, we'll see the ring wala, in that case it is SP3. So stereo center can be SP2 also or can be SP3 also. That you write down. Till now we have discussed SP2. No, in triple bond, Gayatri, it's not possible. See, I'll tell you what, what is happening. See, triple bond won't show geometrical isomerism. Abhidhoko, what is happening here? Yes, right. What is happening here, you see, we have H and CS3, correct? We have CS3 and H. So when you change the position of CS3 in H, then the relative distance between the methyl group is, is decreasing or changing. That will affect the stability of molecule. But when it is a triple bond, then what you will change? Nothing you can change, right? We have only one atom. It's linear. So you can arrange any, like the way you want, you can arrange this in space. You can also write down this way. Like you can arrange any which way you want, right? So like arrangement is same only in space. Hence across triple bond is not possible. Ah, that time in the first slide, I have written triple bond because we have hindered rotation across this. When you rotate, when you try to fix this and rotate this, then again, this pi bond, you have to break. So rotation is hindered, but GI is not possible across this. Okay, now you write down geometrical isomerism because of ring. Geometrical isomerism because of ring. So condition is what? Condition you have to keep in mind. There are two key points in this, write down. At least two sp3 hybridized at least two sp3 hybridized atom must be die substituted must be die substituted okay i'll give you one example 
SP3 is very important, right? It's not SP2, it's SP3. That's why I have, you know, given you the note there that stereo center could be SP2 or SP3 hybridized. Okay. So look at this example. Suppose we have a ring. Three member ring. If you have CS3 here and H here, and CS3 here and H here. Right. So first of all, this is SP3 hybridized. So two atoms are SP3 hybridized and they are disubstituted also means, disubstitution means this two group must be different, atom or group. At SP3 hybridized carbon, this must be different. Then only GI possible. So we can say in this compound, because of ring GI, possible. And the stereo center is the, nothing but the ring over here, right? And we say geometrical isomerism is possible because of ring here. Clear? Just the condition you need to apply. We don't have logic how it happened and all. The way or the rule is given in the book that you have to keep in mind. Okay. Obviously, there are, you know, uh, like, you know, research behind this to give this particular rule. We have a lot of research. So we don't have to go all the history, like how it happened and how do we get to this particular thing that is not at all required. Okay. Now, suppose you have a compound like this four member ring I'm talking about here. One CS3 is attached here and another CS3 is attached here. Yes or no? Acha, why no? Yes, Kenshuk. Why it is yes? Where it is SP2 hybridized? Guy 3. It is not SP2. And it is dye substituted also. I haven't drawn this, but you have to consider this H is there, no? Yes, right, Kinshu. Yes, clear? And both are what? Both are sp3 hybridized, isn't it? This is sp3 and this is sp3. So we can say GI is possible because of ring number of stereo center is one. Any doubt? Okay. This one. Possible? Yes. Now? Possible? Yes. Condition is at least two. So previous one was also fine. GI possible. This one is also fine. GI possible here because the condition is at, at least two. We have three over here. So more than two also fine.
Got it? Okay. See this one. Tell me the number of stereo center in this. How many stereo center we have here? If GI possible. Number of studio center. Number of studio center. Okay, so in this one, if you see, because we have identical group present over here, so GI is possible. Yes, it is possible, but only because of ring. Number of studio center is one over here. That is the ring over here. Okay, in this one, this won't show. Because of ring, it is possible. Double bond, it is possible. So yes, GI possible. Number of stereo center is two. This one, this is a studio center. This is a studio center. Like studio center is not this, it is the ring only the studio center, but these two are SP3 hybridized, right? So yes, GI possible. Number of stereo center is one over here. That is the string. Any doubt? Suppose if you suppose if you place a double bond here, G I possible? G I possible? Yes or no? Yes, possible because at least two again we have sp3 hybridized. What about this? J possible? No, it's not possible because this two become sp2, but the condition is sp3 hybridized. Okay. Any doubt till here? Okay, now the third condition write down. Geometrical isomerism due to double bond inside the ring. This is the least important, but it's still the condition you should know. Write down the note over here. The condition is the ring must be
must be at least at least eight membered right at least eight members should be present in the ring then only it is possible otherwise double bond inside the ring won't show geometrical isomerism okay example you see just one or two example we have not much Suppose you have double bond here. And we have a double bond here. Okay. So in this one, since the member, the number of carbon atom you see in the ring, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we can say we have GI possible in this. And the stereo center is this double bond. So double bond inside the ring show geometrical isomerism. Okay. In this, you see both hydrogen is there on this side. So it is cis form. And in this case, one hydrogen is this side. Another one is this side. It is a trans form we have. Just one condition you have to keep in mind. Nothing much we have. One note you write down here. For eight, nine, and ten membered ring, ten membered ring, cis form is more stable. then trans this is the experimental fact we have for 11 or larger membered ring eleven or more membered ring Trans is more stable. Thus, these two points you have to keep in mind. Nothing else. So, three conditions we have for any compound to show geometrical isomerism double bond, ring, and double bond inside the ring. Done. <clears throat> okay. Now just two, three more examples. You need to tell me GI is possible or not. If possible, then how many studio center? CH3 CH double bond CH BR. The second one is CH3 CH double bond CH.
डबल बॉन्ड सी एच डबल बॉन्ड सी एच टू Tell me. okay so the first one you see if any one condition is there then gi is possible like you see across this double bond gi is possible right yeah anything is possible like in a given compound we have to consider all three conditions right so we have this um, molecule yes gi possible number of stereo center you see sc would be one over here that is a double bond okay if i place one chlorine suppose over here then number of sc will be what number of stereo center in that case would be two one is this double bond and other one is ring okay double bond inside the ring won't show gi because the ring is not eight member okay just we'll remove this across this yes possible because of ring yes possible because of double bond inside the ring yes possible this one not possible yes gi possible number of sc would be isn't it correct gayatri yes second one this one is obviously sp3 hybridized this one is also sp3 hybridized with one lone pair so yes because of ring gi possible and number of sc stereo center is one okay understood just a second guys okay now um one very important example we have we call it as alenes okay i'll show you it's very important jay also they have asked this question many times if you have a compound like this c double bond c double bond c i would request all of you now just for now you just memorize this we'll discuss the logic of this later when we do optical isomerism just you do not get confused when you look at this structure
okay so this type of compound this type of compound it won't show geometrical isomerism no gi possible here keep that in mind because it looks like the you know the distance is different but here what happens this distance between this two ch3 group and this distance is exactly same it is a non planar compound does not look like but this distance is exactly same hence it does not show geometrical isomerism all the repulsion steric hindrance everything is exactly same that's why gi is not possible in this but it shows optical isomerism how and like how it's possible we'll discuss this in optical isomerism but must keep this in mind don't get confused that it is cis or trans type so it's gi possible okay note it down j may they have asked this question many times in general this kind of compound where we have continuous double bond we call it as cumulins this is cumulins double bond double bond double bond double bond like this and when we have even number of double bond in cumulins even number of double bond even number of double bond means it is non planar and optically active just write it down and memorize it okay we'll see this later okay fine so we'll take a break now guys 5 minutes break and then we'll start after this take a break 5 minutes okay okay so uh, we discussed this uh, so this one is important for j point of view also j they have asked this question many times in the exam neat they have also asked in neat as well okay now we see the physical the properties of geometrical isomerism okay two things are left property and there is the number of gi how do we count okay properties of gi geometrical isomerism if they ask you to find out by dipole moment oh sorry boiling point first of all the boiling point is directly proportional to the dipole moment okay if you talk about dipole moment you see this you see, you see this example we have c double bond c ch3 h and here we have ch3 h cis or trans this one cis and this one is trans correct so if you look at the charge separation in this molecule this carbon atom here it is sp2 hybridized and this one is sp3 so we know sp2 hybridized is more electronegative than sp3 so this carbon will drag the electron pair towards this side so we have the charge separation dipole moment like this from positive to negative right from positive to negative so basically it is in this direction dipole moment okay if you talk about the second part the you know the right side of it it is like this again it is sp2 sp3 so dipole moment is like this in this direction from positive to negative always in chemistry right so here it is positive to negative dipole moment so this dipole moment is in this direction basically 
dipole moment is a vector quantity so we have a net dipole moment which is the resultant of this two in this direction mu so we can we don't have to find out calculate the dipole moment we can simply say this molecule has some dipole moment it is not equals to zero and hence the molecule is polar also it is in uh, it is sp3 so from positive to negative the dipole moment in chemistry physics it is ulta physics it is negative to positive here we have positive to negative okay clear so this is for cis we have some net dipole moment similarly here also if you think positive to negative like this and positive to negative like this so this two will cancel out and mu is equals to zero for this for trans so we can say cis will have more dipole moment than trans write it down the dipole moment of cis is more than to that of trans for this example oh wait one second don't write this particular line okay this is the molecule which has more dipole cis and trans we cannot say one example i'll show you if you take this example here did you copy all of you this don't write cis and trans example just to copy down this right you can write down this one this is second and then you can write on dipole moment for the first one is greater than to that of the second one okay it's a reference basically uh, can show there's no uh, like we have pressure we take internal pressure and peris will take external pressure like that so here also reference we have based on that reference we got this it is defined like this only okay here you see this example again one more example i'll show you ch3c double bond c cl h and h gi possible in this is it possible here also it is possible could you tell me e or g it is this one if you think of this has higher priority this has higher priority higher priority same side it is z if you want to say cis this one is cis this one is e and trans with respect to hydrogen we can say cis or trans overall it is z or e okay here if you think of the dipole moment right So dipole moment in this molecule from positive to negative like this it goes, and here from positive to negative like this it goes. Here you see positive to negative like this, positive to negative like this. You see these two are aligned in the same direction. So here also we have mu does not equals to zero for trans, mu does not equals to zero for cis. Which one has more dipole moment? Could you tell me? the right one correct so this is one this is second so you see in this case the trans one will have more dipole moment isn't it so we cannot say cis always have more dipole moment than trans it depends upon what molecule we have is it clear
Yes. Fine. So, um, now with dipole moment, you see what all things we can conclude. Like I already told you, um, dipole moment and boiling point is directly proportional. Okay, dipole moment is also directly proportional to solubility. And all these questions they have asked. Okay, solubility. One second, Shraddha, I'll go back. Solubility and dipole moment directly proportional. We can also write down heat of combustion. Heat of combustion, directly proportional. Hydrogenation, directly proportional. Dipole moment is more, then density is more. Right, dipole moment is more, then refractive index. This you need to memorize all this property. Okay, melting point. Okay, this is one thing. The last two property we have, that is about the thermal stability, stability and melting point. It is more for, more for trans isomers because in trans, the packing is better than cis and hence the melting point is more. Right, trans the packing is better than cis and hence the melting point is more. I'll go back once. Okay, Shraddha, let me know once you're done. Done? Okay. Okay, done all of you? Okay, now the last thing here we need to understand is the calculation of geometrical isomers. Okay, you need to memorize the formula based on condition. Geometrical isomers. See, when the number of stereo center is one, when the number of stereo center equals to, suppose N I am assuming, in general expression I'll write down. Suppose the number of stereo center is N. So in this first case, if N is equals to one, then the number of GI would be Two to the power n, that is two. Cis and trans only possible. 
like you see, if you have a compound like this, trans cis, two isomer possible here. Okay. Second case, if n is greater than one, if n is greater than one, then we have two possibility here. Number of GI equals to two to the power n if when the ends are when the ends are different. What do you mean by this? I'll explain with example just to copy down the formula first. Different ends two to the power n. 2 to the power n minus 1 plus 2 to the power p minus 1 when the ends are same. Where p is equals to n by 2 if n is even. And P is equals to N plus one by two if N is odd. This is what you have to memorize. And then we can solve the questions. Let's copy down this first. Yeah, done. Okay, what do you mean by this end are same or different? We'll discuss this with example. Suppose the first question we have, we have CH3, CH, double bond CH, single bond CH, double bond CH, CL. Okay, tell me how many stereo center we have. We have two stereo center, clearly. This is the one and another one is this. Here you see the ends here, we have CS3 and here we have CL. So we can say here the end are different. Different. So number of GI, the formula you see, it is two to the power n, n value is two here, two to the power two, hence four is the answer. Actually what happens across both the double bond, we can have cis trans possible. Here also we have cis trans possible, hence four possible combination we have totally see cis, 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 trans, trans, cis, trans, trans, like that. If the ends are same, then one of the cis over here will be same as this, right? So that you need to ignore in that case. Understood this? So like that we can uh, think about it and then we can write down the answer. But like this, if you do cis, cis, trans, trans, cis, trans, you need to draw the structure and then compare. Okay, that takes a lot of time. That's why in this particular thing, when, we, when you have to find out the number of GIs, 
okay geometrical isomers you just see the molecule look at the condition and apply formula okay another one you see we have c6h5 ch double bond ch single bond ch double bond ch single bond ch double bond ch single bond ch double bond ch cl tell me the number of gi okay how many gi is possible for this four number of stereo center is 1 2 3 and 4 four stereo center ends are different right hence 2 to the power 4 16 is the answer if you have this ch3 ch double bond ch single bond ch double bond ch ch3 tell me in this one number of gi n values 2 okay yes n values 2 number of gi would be ends are same 2 to the power n minus 1 plus 2 to the power p minus 1 could you tell me the value of p here p is equals to what n by 2 or n plus 1 by 2 it is n by 2 right because n is even so it is 1 and hence this one would be 2 to the power 1 plus 2 to the power 0 that is what 3 we got clearly you can logically you can understand the cis of this and cis of this will be same correct cis across this double bond and cis across this double bond would be same right so you need to count it only once so cis trans here and trans only here correct 3 this one you check CH3 CH double bond CH single bond CH double bond CH single bond CH double bond CH CH3 n value is 3 1 2 n value is 3 ends are same so number of gi would be 2 to the power n minus 1 plus 2 to the power p minus 1 what is p value n plus 1 by 2 since n is odd so p value is 4 sorry 2 p value is 2 when you substitute it here 2 to the power 3 minus 1 plus 2 to the power 2 minus 1 so 4 plus 2 that is 6 understood so like this we can find out the number of geometrical isomers so the first part of this uh stereo isomerism is done that is a geometrical isomerism okay very important this one is because in 12th grade we have a you know chapter called coordination compound 
there also we have the application of geometrical isomerism and optical isomerism okay okay now we'll start with optical isomerism <clears throat> 